Now today's Through the Decades Retrospectacle. It's a little ball of goo that can turn all kinds of tricks. It can stretch, it can bounce, it can even copy images from newspapers or comic books. And there can only be one name for such a unique and gifted substance. Silly Putty, the classic childhood toy that would be anything but if it weren't for a failed scientific experiment. Of one thing you can be sure, we are going to see to it that there's enough rubber to build the planes to bomb Tokyo and Berlin. During World War II, the U.S. faced a serious rubber shortage, jeopardizing production of everything from planes to jeeps, boots and gas masks. Rubber was essential, but with the Japanese in control of many of the rubber-producing countries, the U.S. had to strictly ration its supply. In 1943, the U.S. War Production Board tried to come up with a synthetic substitute and completely by accident wound up with something that was stretchier and bouncier than rubber. Turns out it wasn't practical enough for the government's sake, but there was no denying its entertainment value. A few years later, the strange substance made its way into a toy store. People were intrigued inspiring an entrepreneur named Peter Hodgson to market it on a much larger scale. With the help of students from Yale, he packed one ounce portions into plastic eggs and called it Silly Putty. What is Silly Putty? Well, it's a real solid liquid. If you pull it so, it'll go forever, like taffy. But if you give it a sharp tug, it'll break like a biscuit. Now, when you make Silly Putty round and drop it, it'll bounce higher than a rubber ball. Silly Putty was a quick hit, grabbing the imagination of children all over the world, even finding popularity among adults, including the Apollo 8 astronauts who brought a batch on their mission to orbit the moon in 1968. From accident to sensation, Silly Putty certainly found its place.